we have been looking at the three big tests that are coming to the last days prophetic church and we have been investigating how these tests are coming from God and not from the devil big test C titled the exam and the song subtitled unpreparedness here I was in this third scene among many students preparing for a final exam where one was supposed to play on the piano and sing along a carol or Christmas song. The song was supposed to be an original composition. I had ample time to practice my song selection, but I only began a day to the exam, so I was really unprepared. Although I really loved my song of assessment, there was a section of the song with some key changes I needed to memorize and perfect. So a day before the exam, because of my unpreparedness, I considered replacing my song choice with another one I felt I could make it with. In other words, I could make the exam with this replacement song a song that would be less challenging i understood however that the second choice would not make the impact the first would make the complex nature of my first song choice an original composition would attract more celebration if performed. The song I considered substituting with was the song, What Child Is This? I walked through the song mentally, remembering how I had time to practice through it in a previous year, and I even remembered the minors in it, which make it sound beautiful. However, this was not my own song. Even though I had the freedom to put up a song of preference for my assessment. It was all about my unpreparedness, though I had ample time to practice. There was a sense of complacency. So let's look at understanding from this revelation. Firstly, take note that a new song is a testimony of the singer. And this is the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. So number one, I was unprepared to do the new song, but I was comfortable with the old song and willing to do that for my assessment. Songs usher in revelation. Old songs usher in old or already known revelation. No matter how creatively it is done. New songs, however, usher in new or previously unknown revelation. Although they are more challenging to sing and perform. There are some scriptures that we can look at. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 40, 1 to 3. Psalm 45. Exodus 15, verse 2. When Moses led the Israelites out from Egypt, out of captivity, there was a new song that was sung. Job chapter 35, verse 10. Psalm 18, verse 1. And Psalm 119, verse 54. Number two, understanding from this revelation. 
The new song was complex in its nature or arrangement or its form and so it required significant time to memorize and perfect. But because I was used to the old and time was no longer on my side, I was considering compromising. New songs are new revelation God is releasing to the body. Old songs are already accepted truths. Number three. Being an original composition, I had no point of reference apart from God, who obviously gave me the song, and since the exam would assess both my playing and singing, I would have to work harder. Number four, I took for granted the time I was given to prepare. Number five, the songs to perform were Christmas songs. The Christmas season represents the last days of the year. The last days of the year or of the season. So this is parabolic. Thus, a Christmas song is the last kind of song that is played and sung before a new season or new year begins. Christmas, to a great extent, sets the mood for the new year. It is a season of reflection and celebration of the gift of God to the world. His expression of love summed up in one man, Jesus Christ. I was given a new song that would usher in or usher my audience into the new year being prepared by new revelation and not by the same old truth that is known. Number six, God has released new revelation and new songs that usher in greater or latter day glory. Even as Christmas songs usher in end of year atmosphere or splendor, but many of the custodians of these new dimensions of glory are to be tested and those who will perform the new and more complex songs with perfection will be greatly celebrated. Number seven. The final exam was a performance of a Christmas song. Every performance has an audience. And the success of a performance is greatly influenced by the preparation of the musician. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, including the chief examiner, who is Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So for this big exam, this final exam, the chief examiner is Jesus Christ the author and finisher of our faith. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 also tells us that we have observers of the hope we have in the Lord. We have observers of the hope we have in the Lord. So the audience of this performance are heavenly and earthly. Since the heavenly observers cannot be made perfect without us, we, as the body of Christ, must press forward to lay hold on the better thing or on the better things God has provided for us and not be comfortable where we are, which is short of perfection. We cannot be perfect with just the old and this revelation has challenged me and must challenge you and all of us to be ready to receive the new songs, that is, the new testimonies of the Word of God, the new truths of the Word of God, 
which are about to come to the body of Christ. Number eight. God said to me on 8th November 2022 that he is bringing the body of Christ into a new level of maturity. This is a wake up call to the many fivefold messengers. Messengers like myself who are being put through final trials, preparing us as a body. Number nine, we have become overly complacent with the old, but the new will attract more celebration from the great cloud of witnesses. The new song will come forth through fiery trials and those who carry it have to know this or have to be reminded of this. First Peter chapter 4 verse 12 reads, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. We who have been selected by the Master among all those being examined to preferably perform our new songs must be encouraged by what the Apostle Peter says in this verse and successive verses. That is from verse 13 to 19. We must be prepared to suffer for the testimony of Jesus that we carry. Peter had to suffer at the hand of the Jews for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Paul also had to suffer for his new revelation which he had received from the Lord Jesus Christ himself and not from the flesh and to go to the Gentiles who had not yet heard of Christ the commission of Jesus Christ to preach the gospel of the kingdom to every creature has not yet been fulfilled and so we are at the verge of new testimonies that will advance the cause of God's kingdom into unexplored terrains and spheres of society. Peter had to be open-minded, for example, to receive Paul's testimony of Jesus. Although he could have felt that he lived physically with Jesus and knew more about him than Paul did. Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 15, 16. Even so, there is a generation of very respectful ministers of the gospel that must be humble enough, very respectable, older generation ministers of the gospel, just like Peter was there before Paul. They must be humble enough, like the Apostle Peter, to receive the ministry of Paul, who came in last, but didn't come in behind, in power and in revelation. Paul challenges what Peter believes is the truth. So that the gospel remains unhindered and that it can go to every creature. I speak metaphorically to those who must speak for the Lord like Peter or Paul, the Lord warns us about keeping silent. We must speak the message of God entrusted to us. So I call out to you, if you are a minister of the gospel and you have been entrusted with some special revelation, you must speak your revelation. You must speak your revelation. You must speak your revelation. 1 Corinthians 14 admonishes that if we come together, each person has something they are coming with. Someone is coming with a psalm, 
someone is coming with a revelation and we must speak in order one after the other and allow judgment we must be come mature enough to allow our revelations to be tested to be challenged to be questioned and we are able to respond with scriptures and also with the truth of what christ has given to us so the army of the lord is rising and this army has received a testimony of the lord that the older generation of servants do not have and this can bring some challenge but the holy spirit is ever present to bring reconciliation just as he did between peter and paul so that the gospel should be preached unhindered and in the fullness of the glory that it was given in number 10 there are also those among the many who represent believers that are not prepared for the more complex aspects of their lives such as leaving everything behind to follow Jesus becoming born again and enjoying the benefits of Christianity and uh, word of faith and healings and deliverance and prosperity all these are wonderful and desirable but the more difficult aspect of Christianity which is to pick up one's cross to deny oneself and to follow Jesus many 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 most believers are not prepared for that aspect of the gospel so these are they whom God has given sufficient experience in the old life too but they have become content with just that and are unchallenged to commit time to learn about their purpose and what God wants them to do revelations on who they are called to be where they are supposed to be in these last days and the challenges they must surmount are being released in this season but because many have not spent ample time to meditate on these revelations many are unprepared and this is the typology of the exam the final exam God is advancing the entire body of Christ not only the leaders but he will surely separate the goats from the sheep before that not all made it into the ark except those who believe the message of Noah but a greater than Noah came to bring many into salvation that is Jesus the question now is are you among the many that Jesus has brought into salvation then the call to you and I in this season from the Lord and the Master Jesus is to advance towards the straight and narrow path and to press forward towards the mark the prize of high calling of God in Christ now I refer to a mandate I received on 4th November 2017 and I read the word of the Lord that came to me in the word of the Lord the, the Lord said to me warn those men of God whom God has put his message into their mouths but are not speaking it those who are indoctrinated and have moved away from what is written in bold print in the Bible, in the scriptures, and from trusting God's word into saying something that he does not say. As well as those refusing to speak the messages that God has given to them as he has given it to them, without sugarcoating or without compromise. The warning is that there is a shake-up coming into the church 
where the sheep will be separated from the goats. And God said to me, warn them. This was in 2017. Certainly, this scripture has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled. We have seen judgments set in the body of Christ. We've seen judgments of leaders and it's growing. But the call to you who is watching me as a man of God, as a woman of God, is that whatever you received in the secret place is God's wisdom and power unto salvation. You do not have the right, having received the revelation and the message from the Holy Spirit, to alter that message because of the fear of men. Remember what happened with Saul. When Saul compromised and did not obey God, Saul lost his kingdom. And God is not afraid to repeat that. We are warned, we are called to repentance on that matter. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians verse 9, that we should not be cast away after we have preached to others. We should beat our body then into subjection. I pray that this message, this revelation of the three big tests that God says is come to the last days prophetic church awakens you to the reality that we have to fear God and not the devil. Because the biggest tests in these last days actually are coming from God and not Satan. And these three big tests, as I read, number one, the hijacker, delegated authority. How are we going to handle delegated authority? Number two, the lunatic, discernment. Are we discerning as a church? To discern evil spirits from good spirits and are we able to discern the thoughts the intents of the hearts of men and women that we interact with number three the big the final exam and the song unpreparedness are we preparing ourselves with a new revelation that has been given as leaders in the body of Christ? Are we preparing to bring the rest of the body into the knowledge of these truths? Or have we put it aside because of the fear of men? Because we are unprepared to defend the gospel which has been given unto us. As it happened in the days of Peter and Paul, God is still working it out. To bring the body into perfection. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, 12, 13, 14. It is time for you and I to arise and to seek God and to press in deeper so that these three big tests, we will pass them and we will enter into higher levels of authority demonstrating sonship to the nations thank you for joining me in this video message i pray that you have been blessed and i pray that god will speak to you some more you can comment you can send me a message on my ministry website paulison.com that is paulison e-s-u-o-n dot com and you can subscribe please definitely subscribe hit the like button share this video wide and let it be a blessing unto the body of christ may the lord be with you and see you in the next video bye bye